Hello friends and welcome to The Beginner's Guide to Pokemon Battles So since I have seen a few trainers that just don't know how to play the game and I'm not shaming anyone alright I'm just saying that you know it's alright to be a noob at the start because everyone you know has to start somewhere but I just decided it might be actually pretty nice to teach a few of you how to play the game so that you can just experience the most out of it. Or at least the most that you can. So I have come up with nine different points that you probably want to follow if you want to be good, at least as good as I am. I am not the best. I'm not even close to being like really good. I'm just solid enough to be able to, you know, outplay a few Ubers team with PU stuff. Ha! Right, James? So, if you see yourself as a good Pokemon battler, you probably don't want to watch this video, or just watch it anyway, maybe you'll learn something anyway. But if you're a noob and you want to learn how to play this Pokemon battle game, please watch this and follow those steps. So, let's get this party started, alright? Number 1. Choose Pokemon of different types. So, let's begin with this. There is a lot of Pokemon. You know in in the game and because of that there's also a lot of types in the game so you probably want to choose Pokemon of different types in your team you only have six slots so if you fill all of those slots with for example electric Pokemon well what happens if your opponent has ground types you're, you're just done for you know because electric doesn't work on ground and ground does work on electric pretty effectively in fact super effectively so you know, there's a lot of types. Choose types that, you know, you like. For example, start with water, because you like water. Then, you know, it's like, oh, so water is weak to electric. So electric is resisted by ground. Oh, I'm gonna choose ground. All right, I have water and ground. Now, they are both weak to grass, so I probably wanna choose fire. And, um, you know, go from there. You, you probably wanna get a few types. Pokemon also have dual types, so that's also a benefit. Just, you know, let yourself go. Number two, think about the role of the Pokemon. So for example, if you're choosing a defensive Pokemon such as Steelix, you don't really want to make it like a fast support, you know, you don't want it to be like, oh, I'm gonna just be quick and, you know, toxic stuff and then switch out because oh, I cannot take a hit. No, Steelix can take a hit because it's a defensive Pokemon, so you put a lot of defense in it and then you, you know, make it a stealth rock setter and toxic setter and, um, Protect, Dragon Tail, stuff like that. On the other hand, if you have like, a, you know, a super offensive Pokemon such as, for example, Deoxys attack, you don't want it to be defensive, you just want it to go all out. Look at its attack stat, it's pretty fucking massive, right? So you wanna use it. You wanna use all these strong attacks and just decimate everyone, probably for a, go for a one-hit KO, I don't know. Also, think about synergies. So for example, if you have six defensive Pokemon, that's pretty bad if uh, someone wants to set up and just sweeps you because, you know, you're just like, Oh, I'm gonna toxic this, toxic that, stealth like this, defend, uh, well... No, just, you know, get a bunch of synergies going, like attack and defense, speed and stall. Just start with that. Number three. Don't give your Pokémon four moves of the same type. You know, that's just, that's just weird. Because if you have a Pokémon that's, again, electric, and all of your moves are electric, how are you gonna beat the ground type? Whatever it is, even if you're a level 100 Raikou and you're against, you know, a level 1 Diglett, you're not gonna win because it's just ground and your moves are all electric and none of the moves have any effect. Unless you go to struggle, but let's skip that for now. So, typically, you wanna go for a stab move. What is a stab move? Well, it's the same type attack bonus, which happens when your type of your Pokemon and your move are the same. Then you get the 1.5 boost to your power. So for example, if you're Raikou, you wanna give him something nice like Thunderbolt, which starts at 90 and plus stab, that's uh, 2 million. So you start with the stab move and then add coverage moves that, you know, make your Pokemon benefit of the moves against the types that it's normally weak to. So for example, Raikou, starting with Thunderbolt, would like to have Hidden Power Ice, for example, for the ground types. Then you can easily kill, you know, Gliscors and all that nasty, nasty fucking ground types. 
Fuck line score. Sometimes you also want a second move of your type if it serves a purpose. For example, if it's a priority move. Priority is when your move goes faster, even if your Pokemon's speed is slower than its opponent's. So for example, if you're a Metagross and your stab is Meteor Mash, you probably want to have Bullet Punch just to get you know, those easy kills. And for coverage, always go for moves that just make sense. I don't know. Number 4. Don't give your Pokemon only super strong moves. Alright, so if you pack Giga Impact, Hyper Beam, Hydro Cannon and fucking Super Power on your Feraligator, well, you're gonna have a tough time because, first of all, low accuracy. You're not gonna be hitting those moves all the time. And second of all, you know, recharge or charge up if you're using Sky Attack, for example. It looks menacing to be up against, you know, a Hyper Beamer who just goes Hyper Beam, Hyper Beam, Hyper Beam. But Gen 1 is over and, you know, there's a lot of moves now that can be easily outplayed or used better than those super strong moves. Of course, I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. So if you're using a Fire Blast on your Charizard, that's still okay. But don't put Fire Blast, Hyper Beam, Why you? Sky Attack and I don't know, something else. That's only strong, because then you're gonna get outplayed easily. Number 5. Get to know your items well. So, it's pretty important to know what item does what. For example, Focus Sash lets your Pokemon live a hit even if it's gonna take 100%. That's pretty nifty if you're, you know, if you're gonna die to a move, but oh, whoops, you're actually alive, hello. And then you can use Endeavor or Counter or Mirror Coat. That's pretty nice. Berries typically heal your health or status condition, so that's also pretty nice. They also can lower uh, super effective damage. Life Orb gives a boost but decreases your HP. And Choice Items increase your stats but make you only choose one move. Leftovers is the universal item as it just gives extra HP every turn. So it's important to know what item goes on which Pokemon. Because for example, if you're going extra offense, it doesn't really make sense for you to get leftovers just to get that 6% plus health every turn. If you can just get uh, yourself a life orb and benefit from the 1.3 move damage boost. Okay, so now you know how to build your team. Somewhat. You know what Pokemon to choose, you know what roles they would play, you know what items to give, you know what moves to give. Alright, so your team is ready, alright? Now, let's get into battling. Number 6. Think what your opponent will lead with. So, see yourself as your opponent when you start the battle. Then you have to plan accordingly. So for example, if you have 3 steel types and your opponent has a Pokemon that's fire type, he will probably think, oh, he has 3 steel types. I should probably lead with the fire type to counter them. And then you bust out a water type Pokemon to counter him, huh? Nice! So you know how to lead. Let's go to number 7. Try to predict switches. So you just busted the Surf on a Blaziken, right? It did a lot of damage. So your opponent's gonna think, hmm, I probably shouldn't stay with Blaziken. Maybe I should switch to a Grass type, which will take little damage from the Surf. And so they do. But what did you do? You went for Ice Beam, even though it didn't make sense to use Ice Beam on a Blaziken, right? <laughs> but you made the ballsy move and now the grass type is getting walloped. Very nice. Number 8. Evaluate what is most useful at the time. So if you see your opponent is faster than you and can easily kill you, but for some reason you like your Pokemon that's low on health so much that you want to preserve it, well, just do it. But think about it, maybe it's better to let it die and just safely introduce a new Pokemon that's at full health. Maybe your favorite Arceus is not the most useful in this battle because it's ground type and all your opponent's Pokemon are flying types. Number 9. Don't use the same Pokemon over and over again. Well, that's my personal issue with the game. After playing this, this fucking thing for more than 15 years now, I think, I've just grown bored of, you know, how repetitive the battles are. Because, for example, if you go to Ubers, 
you're gonna see Primal Kyogre, Primal Groudon, Arceus and some mega Pokemon almost every single battle. That's why I decided to do PU or random Pokemon versus Ubers because if I did Ubers I probably would have gone with the same Pokemon because they just work, they're strong. I, I'm not saying, you know, it's weird that it's always the same, it's just boring. So please try to use Pokemon from different tiers and with different tactics, different moves, different items in your everyday tiers because that just makes the game a bit more interesting. So now you know my 9 steps of becoming a very very good Pokemon trainer. If you apply all of them you should be good enough to beat me for example, oh my god. Anyway guys, if you liked it, that's nice. I like it that you like it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye bye!